Okay, here we have question number three from May June 2015, um, paper four, variant two. I'll be answering part A. Okay, and then one of my students has <laughs> requested to answer part B. Let's see what's going on YouTube, no problem. Um, okay, so let's start with part A. On the first part, oh, this is a question. On the first part of a journey, Alan drove a distance of X kilometers and his car used six liters of fuel. The rate of fuel used by his car was 600 over X liters per 100 kilometers. So the rate of fuel used by his car was 600 over X liters per 100 kilometers. Okay, that's the rate of fuel used by his car. Okay. Um, I've got to put my pen in, sorry. There we go. That's better. Okay. So now... Okay, that's better. Okay. So the rate of fuel, as I said, used by his car was 600 or X litres per 100 kilometres. Alan then drove another X plus 20 kilometres and his car used another 6 litres of fuel. Write down an expression in terms of X for the rate of fuel used by his car on this part of the journey. Give your answer in litres per 100 kilometres. Okay. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to see how they got to this expression which they have given for the first part. Okay. They told us it's 600 over X litres per 100 kilometres. So you see that he's driven X kilometres and he's used six liters of fuel okay so they want to know how much fuel he uses per 100 kilometers that's what this means six, this means the, num the number of liters used for every 100 kilometers so we want to know in 100 kilometers how much fuel did he use and you can see that when you want to find what this x is oh, no, 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 i'm not going to call it x that's a very bad idea we're going to call it something else. Let's me call it Y because already, there's already an X here. X is not um, you know, the rate of fuel used per 100 kilometers. X is the distance that he's driven, right? So I'm going to call Y, okay, the rate of fuel per 100 kilometers, okay? So that's the, the amount of fuel he uses in 100 kilometers, and this is the amount of fuel he uses in X kilometers. If I cross multiply, I'll have 600, 6 times 100 over X, which is 600 over x so this is how they came about with this okay just to make just to make sure that we're on the right tracks okay so now i'm going to apply the same principle to what they told us okay so i, I want to find in 100 kilometers how much fuel he uses okay and i know that he's driven x plus 20 kilometers okay and he's used six liters of fuel so, six liters of fuel so now we can say that y is equal to 6 times 100 over x plus 20. So it's 600 over x plus 20. And that's it. Very simple. Okay? Okay, so it's just, that's the rate of fuel that he uses. That's the rate of fuel per 100 kilometers. That's how much fuel he uses in traveling 100 kilometers. Okay, now part two. On this part of the journey, the rate of fuel used by the car decreased by 1.5 liters per 100 kilometers. So on the second part of the journey, the second part of the journey that's, that we've got the answer for, the rate of fuel used by the car decreased by 1.5 liters per 100 kilometers. And you've got to show that this equation is true. So I know the rate of fuel that he used on the first part of the journey, which is 600 over X, is, is the, uh, the rate is, is higher than the rate that he used in the second part of the journey, okay? So if I subtract, if I say 600 over X, which is the rate of fuel used in the first part of the journey, I subtract from it 600 over X plus 20, which is the rate of fuel used in the second part of the journey, that should give me 1.5. Okay, so that's the rate of fuel per 100 kilometers in the first part of the journey. That's the rate of fuel per 100 kilometers in the second part of the journey. This is 1.5 liters per 100 kilometers more than that. So if you subtract them, you're going to get 1.5 liters per 100 kilometers. Okay, now I've got to make this equation look like this. Okay, I've got to make this equation 
look like this. Okay? Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make this into one fraction. Okay? So, to make this into one fraction, this, there's a few ways of thinking about it. I'll do it the, the way that people are used to with fractions. So, you're going to have to make these the same denominator. So, you have x times x plus 20, and x times x plus 20 is a common di denominator. Okay? And what do I have to do to this to make it x times x plus 20? You've got to multiply by x plus 20. So, 600 times x plus 20. And here I have to multiply this by x, so I've got 600 times x. Okay, move this out of the way. Now, I can make this now under one denominator. Oops, make this under one denominator, which is x times x plus 20. And I've got here 600. I will just multiply it out 600x plus, now 600 times 20, that's 12 and three zeros, 12,000. So minus 600x equals 15. The 600x and the 600 minus 600x will cancel. And now we're left with 1,000, well, 12,000. And I can cross multiply, I can multiply both sides by x times x plus 20. So I'll have on this side 15 times x times x plus 20. Okay, and now I've got 12,000 equals 15x squared plus 15 times 20 is 300x. And if I bring everything to one side, I'll have 15x squared plus 300x. Sorry, not 15, it's 1.5. What am I doing? It's 1.5, 1.5. Okay, that's a 1.5, that's a 1.5, that's a 1.5, okay, and that's 30. 1.5 times 20 is 30. You've got to be very careful. Little dot makes such a difference. Okay, so 1.5x squared plus 30x. Okay, so you have 1.5x squared plus 30x minus... 12,000 equals 0. Now, I want to make this look like that. Okay, so I can, first of all, what I can do is, I could, um, I could if I divide by 1.5, I'm sure it will become like that. All right, but just to make it a bit clearer, let's first get rid of the decimal. Let's multiply both sides by everything by 2. You're going to get 3x squared plus 60x minus 2,000, 24,000 equals 0, and then we can divide everything by 3. You see, 3 goes into all of these, you get 3x squared divided by 3 is x squared. 60x divided by 3 is 20x, and minus 24,000 divided by 3 is minus 8,000 equals 0, and there we have our answer. Okay, and that's part, that's um, A, part 2 of this question answered. And I'll do the next part in the next video. Some of you.